You got this, Joel. Hello, debaters of the world. The new public forum topic for January 2021 is out. The resolution reads as follows. Resolved, the National Security Agency should end its surveillance of U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents. Now, this topic is uh, difficult. I've spent like six and a half days researching and prepping for the topic, and I'm still running across new arguments. Nevertheless, I think I can confidently say that this is the best intro that you'll have to the topic in terms of public forum debate on YouTube. Um, I know this because I watched the other public forum videos. I will try my best to condense the basic info down so that you can crush it in a tournament without wasting a huge amount of your time. As always, these in these lectures could be entire university courses. We're going to try to do everything I can to cram this in 30 minutes. Before I get on to topic analysis, a little bit of housekeeping. First, all of the evidence I cite in the video is in the NSA brief available for free at debatetrack.com. There you'll find a bunch of other stuff to spoil you, like an answer cheat sheet, full cases, cahoots to help quiz you or your team or your class on the topic. And once again, this is all free. Second, I recommend taking notes on this video because there's going to be a lot coming at you. I also have a few links spread throughout the video for you to examine, so pause the video to check them out or write them down to explore later. Use the NSA brief in Google to help you answer questions that come up during the topic and to fact check me because I could be wrong about everything here. Also, as an extra practice activity, you can pause the video after each argument that I introduce and try to come up with your best rebuttal in like 30 seconds. And then after your brainstorming, see how it compares to the NSA frontline stock on debatetrack.com. Hopefully, you'll do better than me at coming up with rebuttals. Third, I have some ways for you to practice debate and make money at the same time. That will be at the end of the video. Last, if you find this video helpful, please subscribe. And as usual, leave like three different comments for the algorithm on YouTube. Uh, maybe give me your three favorite fruits in three different comments or your favorite ways to get spied on in three different comments. And if you really want to be a bro, send this video to whatever other public forumers you know. So let's begin, shall we? Once again, the resolution reads, the National Security Agency should end its surveillance of U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents. First, on wording. The National Security Agency refers to the NSA from the United States. There are other countries that also have NSAs. They don't apply unless you're making a meme or tricks case, which you shouldn't. Uh, this does not apply to other security agencies, so we say... The National Security Agency should end its surveillance of U.S. citizens, but we don't say the FBI has to stop, the CIA has to stop, local police agencies have to stop. There's plenty of other security agencies that could keep surveillance um, if the NSA is stopped. It also doesn't apply to other nations. So obviously there's many countries who want to collect information about U.S. citizens. Um, our enemies obviously want to collect information about us. Um, our allies also want to collect information about us. We'll get to that later. Uh, should. So they're could and will be whole lectures on the word should uh, or ought to, right? Um, a very brief breakdown should means that the NSA should the NSA should do something if it's in the best interest of the U.S. government. Why? Because the NSA is part of the U.S. government. Or you can say it should do something if it's in the interest of U.S. citizens because uh, after all, the government does represent citizens. And a lot of this topic will be the differences in uh, interest when the government interest and U.S. citizen interest comes into conflict. But how do we know what's good for the government or good for citizens? There's different values you can judge that by. Should we be trying to save lives? Should we be helping the economy? Uh, should we be trying to maintain U.S. hegemony? Should it be a balance of these things or should it be other things? All up for debate. Next, surveillance. So when the NSA talks about surveillance, they talk about searching their databases. When most people talk about surveillance, they mean the NSA collecting information. So the NSA collects pictures, emails, metadata, phone records, uh, social media information, things like this, right? Most people would consider that surveillance. If they're stealing the pictures off your laptop, you would say, okay, that's surveillance. That's most people's definition. Their definition is more like uh, if they end up using that or searching through it, right? So um, I'm not surveilling you if I take your emails, I'm surveilling you if I'm reading those emails, right? I'm not surveilling you if I'm uh, taking your pictures, I'm surveilling you if I'm looking through those pictures. Uh, next, targeted versus mass surveillance. So most of the issues coming up with the NSA are in terms of mass surveillance. Uh, in other words, taking information from hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions of people at a time. That's why people are mad at the NSA. 
Targeted surveillance means perhaps you have a warrant. You definitely have a suspect. There's uh, one dude, it's usually a dude, <laughs> that you want to target because they're a criminal suspect, a terrorism suspect, and um, this is different, of course, from uh, mass surveillance. Okay, next, legal versus illegal. Uh, should the NSA end its legal surveillance? which means maybe there's one suspect they have that's a U.S. citizen, they think he's uh, working with terrorists, or should they end all surveillance? Um, none of these three things, surveillance for searching, targeted versus mass, or legal versus illegal searching, are addressed in the resolution. If you want to take a simple reading of the topic, the NSA should end all of its surveillance of U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents. Even if the citizen is a suspect, even if the uh, U.S. citizen is being targeted specifically, uh, even if the U.S. citizen's information isn't being used, maybe they're just collecting and not using it. If you want a strict reading of the resolution, that's what it means. Zero uh, surveillance of any U.S. citizen for any reason, but there will be some debate in what this word surveillance means. Uh, next, if you want to end surveillance, in other words, if you're on the pro team, I recommend using the word spying. And in fact, I'm going to probably be using the word spying throughout a lot of this video, not just because of the connotation, which is obviously bad uh, versus surveillance, but also because surveillance is just a long word and I'm going to have to say it a lot of times. U.S. citizens and lawful permanent residents, that means exactly what it sounds like. So uh, lawful permanent residents, uh, green card holders would be part of this. Uh, it would not apply to temporary workers, it would not apply to international students, it would not apply to tourists, it would not apply to illegal aliens. So if you're here, if you're in the U.S. illegally, if you're he, uh, in the U.S. temporarily, um, this would not apply to you. NSA is still free and welcome to spy on you. That is wording. Let's do the NSA background next before we get to actual arguments. So... Um, a history of the NSA, I'm going to go through this briefly because most of it doesn't matter. Founded in 1952, uh, its purposes for intelligence gathering, uh, counterintelligence as well, and signet, which means signal intelligence, essentially electronic intelligence. Even in 1952, they had electronics, so it was obviously way different and far smaller scope, but they had them, right? Uh, 78, FISA and FISA courts were established. This is a law and uh, courts that lay out the procedures for how the NSA should work. Who should it spy on? How should they do it? Who should uh, have checks and balances over the NSA? Uh, this is a really, really big topic that doesn't matter that much, but you'll hear this vocab a lot. And uh, the FISA law has been updated many, many times. So these updates could change uh, essentially the status quo of the topic um, and, and means that the evidence you... Um, use can't be from the past, right? Like 70s, 80s, 90s, maybe it's pretty obvious, but this, this older evidence won't count because there's been so much updates to FISA, especially since um, uh, 2001. Speaking of which, 2001, another uh, big law, the Patriot Act, this was after 9-11 under Bush, happened like a month-ish after the 9-11 attacks. Um, a law that pretty much said the government can do whatever it wants uh, if in terms of keeping the U.S. safe. Uh, so a, a controversial act, a controversial law, but at the time, um, there was a reason for it. Uh, if you don't know about 9-11, please go watch a documentary. Maybe pick a five-minute one for now and schedule an hour-long documentary for later. It was uh, important. 2005, the New York Times had a report about wire warrantless wiretaps. These were not on U.S. citizens. They were on foreign suspects. But uh, the FISA court is supposed to give warrants to the NSA for its spying, for its wiretaps, wiretaps just being um, uh, gathering information from some kind of wire, a phone, uh, text messages or something. And you're supposed to have warrants uh, to do any kind of a search like this. But the New York Times had this report like, hey, they're not getting warrants from the FISA court. 2013, Edward Stone, which is the guy in the picture on the right, uh, had a big leak about mass surveillance. So mass surveillance is the big... Uh, thing, right? Mass surveillance, um, gathering, once again, information from hundreds of thousands, millions, hundreds of millions, or just everyone, gathering information from everyone about everything all at the same time. Um, Edward Snowden was a government contractor who worked in Hawaii, this smart kid who uh, was 
essentially just in charge of, of doing a lot of the surveillance, and he's like, the government should not be doing this. So he uh, downloaded a bunch of like classified documents, released it to uh, the press, to the guy on the left, uh, Julian Assange. Uh, both of them got in huge trouble for it. Uh, Julian Assange is in jail now for helping that uh, leak, and uh, Edward Snowden is a refugee, I mean, a fugitive in Russia. Um, so, yeah, that's what, whatever. He, he's also going to come up a lot in this topic. 2015 USA Freedom Act tried to put, after this uh, big uh, leak, of course, tried to put some limits on essentially the Patriot Act and NSA's surveillance programs. Um, in practice, the, the tweaks were minor, like the NSA is still pretty much allowed to do whatever it wants, even under the USA Freedom Act, but the idea of this was like, let's get our rights back, people. Um, so the NSA is highly controversial, this mass surveillance program, highly controversial, that's why it's a topic, um, but more importantly, it's highly secretive, and this is something worth talking about. So because the NSA is such a secretive organization, there's not a lot we know about it, right? And if there's not a lot we know about it, how can we debate about it? 2013 is when these, uh, this, this WikiLeaks wiretap and other documents, this, this classified uh, information was released to the public. And this is where a lot of the evidence is from. A lot of uh, journalism, a lot of testimony came from 2013. So you're going to see this year um, quite a bit in the evidence. Since then, we don't have a lot of new information about it because, once again, Edward Snowden, the guy who gave, this, gave us all of that information, is living in Russia uh, as a like political asylum seeker and he he's he's we, we don't have anyone who's be, who's able to funnel us more information updated information about the what the nsa is doing the nsa also uh, just classifies everything so there's a lot of operations that they have that they don't tell us about we can only garner information from a very very uh, few amount of releases that, that they've had especially in 2013 but the whole thing it being so secretive is going to influence this um topic a lot the second thing about it being highly controversial is that most of the information we get is going to be biased towards the pro side, right? Because people are like, hey, the NSA is spying on us. They're collecting everything. Uh, they're taking away our rights. They're violating the law and the Constitution. So uh, journalists, especially being a little bit more left leaning, are very like anti all of this stuff. Um, it's not necessarily because they're left leaning, but in any case, uh, most of the information is going to be kind of on the pro side. A lot of the uh, pro-NSA or con side of the evidence is going to come from NSA sources or government sources, government agencies, FBI, NSA, CIA, things like that. People who give testimony about why the NSA is important, why the surveillance program is important, etc. But the fact that the NSA is highly secret, that will be a big part of this topic. So what exactly does the NSA use to spy on you? Um, I'm listing here only the programs that I have evidence about cut in the brief. Um, there's a very, very long list down at the bottom, that link. You can find so much of the things that they do. But just briefly, Dashfire collects text messages. Uh, out of the text messages, they're uh, able to extract credit card information, like scheduling information, uh, digital business cards, a lot of information you can actually get out of text messages. Um, Optic Nerve, these program names are so badass. Optic Nerve spies on webcam images. They, they take, I think it was especially uh, uh, Yahoo, some kind of like Yahoo chat rooms, uh, webcam images. If this sounds creepy to you, it's because it's super creepy. It's definitely creepy. X key score. So the NSA is collecting um, email, text message, um, metadata, social media, location, uh, cohort information about millions of people at once, right? How do they use all of this information across millions of individuals with X key score. So X key score is kind of like a Google for the NSA's Trevor treasure trove of information. So they type in, let's say an email, and then they can get all of the associated information with this email, right? Like what are the emails and uh, who is this person? Where do they live? Where have they been? What have they been doing this week? Where have they been going? Who do they hang out with? Uh, it, it's just the database to allow you to, the, you to search through this incredible amount of information. Uh, Boundless Informant gives analysis, especially at the country level. So the NSA really is supposed to be um, for protecting us from international threats, not domestic threats. Uh, so Boundless Informant tells us a lot of like high level information about these countries that we're spying on. Next, uh, Five Eyes is a group of uh, countries, unsurprisingly, five countries. 
uh, the U.S. being one of them, that um, work together on intelligence projects. So uh, because the NSA collaborates with these countries, um, they are able to get information collected from U.S. citizens by other countries. So Israel spies on U.S. citizens. They're allowed to do that. UK spies on US citizens, they're allowed to do that by law, right? And then they can feed this information to the NSA, and so the NSA can kind of uh, skirt around the laws about uh, surveilling citizens this way. We'll talk about why this matters uh, later. By the way, the NSA claims they don't do that. They don't. They claims they don't. They claim they don't actually do any sort uh, searches or surveillance, uh, sort of illegally from other countries. But you know. Some of the main issues that we'll be looking at in this debate are first, we had alluded to this earlier, security versus freedom. So the pro side is, at least in the stock case, going to be making the case for freedom. The US, uh, US citizens need privacy, we need uh, freedom, we should be able to do what we want, they, what we want. Uh, we should have a limited government um, and we shouldn't have the government trying to control our every move, which is a very kind of authoritarian thing. Um, and so the pro side can emphasize this, that as Americans, we need to protect our values, we need to protect our rights, we need to limit our government, and we can't let the government be bloated and take control of everything that we're doing in our lives. Uh, security, on the other hand, on the con side, um, the con side may kind of characterize the government as paternal, meaning, yes, the citizens don't want the government to do these things, but it's in their best interest, right? So, like, if you have a little kid and you're their parent, like, they don't want... Uh, uh, they want to walk towards the edge of the cliff. They want to play with the tiger. You as the parent have to make the decision for them to keep them safe that they're not allowed to do these things, even if they want to. So we want to have our freedom, but that's kind of a naive understanding of the world. The government, especially the security agencies who are meant to keep us safe, need to do what they're supposed to do, right? We can't have more 9-11, more terrorist attacks because we want a little bit more privacy. Um, Life outweighs everything. It doesn't matter if you want your values. It doesn't matter if you are anti-authoritarian. None of these things matter if you're dead. And lastly, if you have nothing to hide, if you're not a criminal, why should you care if the U.S. government is spying on you? I mean, after all, we put everything on social media um, and the NSA doesn't really intervene in most cases. I mean, a lot of people do illegal stuff all the time without getting caught. If you don't have anything to hide, there should be really no danger in the U.S. spying on you. Next, legal versus illegal. Uh, laws are changing all the time in regards to the NSA. So what is legal and what is not illegal under the NSA depends on uh, what laws have been updated, which laws have expired, uh, which have been written, which ones do they care about. Um, they do some things that are legal, some things that are illegal, and it depends on the interpretation, right? And this changes all the time. Once again, we mentioned how secret they are. So are, what exactly are they doing? Are they exactly breaking the law or not? We don't really know, right? And we have to go kind of case by case as lawsuits come out about the NSA, which are sadly few and far bet between, to determine what does a court, this court, think is legal or think is illegal. Uh, we also have testimony versus actuality, meaning the NSA says they do things. But is that what they do? They say they don't do a lot of things. Are they actually not doing that? There is some controversy about this. And in fact... Uh, it's claimed in a lot of evidence that they lie about things, which I don't think is such a far stretch. We just mentioned Five Eyes before, right? So this is one way that the NSA can skirt around laws. If the UK is spying on your citizens, if uh, New Zealand is spying on your citizens, that's not you spying on your citizens, right? That's not the same thing. That's a different country. But then they can share their information with the NSA, and so the NSA can kind of indirectly spy on you as citizens. Next, contractors. Um, these are... Civilians, private citizens who are hired by the NSA to do uh, surveillance work. And so if the government is not allowed to spy on you, if the NSA is not allowed to spy on you, uh, if their employees are not allowed to spy on you, what about a third party contractor, right? Like a, a free agent. Uh, the NSA apparently hires a lot of contractors. This is according to uh, Bunscombe 19, which I believe he's citing uh, Edward Snowden in this article. But they're talking about, yeah, just how the NSA employs a huge amount like maybe half or more of their employees are contractors so that they can do the things they want to do without uh, violating U.S. law technically. The last question that we have to think about is, um, is the NSA actually working, right? If, if it's supposed to stop terrorism, is it stopping terrorism? The most testimony we have from the NSA is once again from a 2013 uh, hearing before Congress where 
uh, the uh, General Al Alexander, the head of the NSA, and Sean Joyce, the head of the FBI. These are the guys pictured. The general is the guy who looks like the general. The sh FBI guy is the dude who looks like an FBI guy. Uh, they testified that 50 terrorist attacks have been stopped, including 10 of them being uh, domestic, so inside of the USA attacks that have been stopped due to their surveillance program. Um, this was in 2013, so it's clear that if there were 50 terror attacks that have been stopped in 2013, there should be many more now in 2020. How many more? We don't know. The NSA is highly secretive. Uh, these things are all classified. And they don't tell us. And there's no way to know. Even their court, the FISA court that reviews information, it's all secret. It's all classified. They don't release things generally. Um, so even during this testimony, during this he hearing, there were details of four of these attacks that were released. And uh, we can go into, uh, were these actually credible threats? Were they actually serious? Was it actually the NSA who stopped them? Was it NSA surveillance that stopped them? 46 of the cases they cited were classified, cap classified, are still classified. So we have to kind of take their word for it that they're important. Why are they classified? Because if they released information about it, it could harm their ability to continue to um, stop terrorists, right? Maybe some terrorists see the information that's released and say, hey, well, here's a method around their surveillance. Um, so releasing state secrets obviously can have its danger. I don't think we need to um, that's not too much of a stretch of the imagination, but can we trust the NSA or not? That's a whole another question. So the pros, um, stance on this issue should be, it's not effective because how do we know it's effective? They've released literally four cases of them stopping some attacks. And these are very questionable, you know, like maybe a guy, I think in one of the cases, a guy had exchanged some emails um, some kind of planning to blow up the New York Stock Exchange to bomb it. Well, uh, I mean, this was a guy. I think I think he was he was in the Virginia or something. I mean, he was he was he wasn't he wasn't that close to the stock exchange. And you can imagine that for every one serious terrorist, there must be a thousand or thousands of kind of half-hearted terrorists who are kind of exchanging emails, saying some things, chatting a little bit, but like, was this a serious attack or not? Um, in all four of these cases, it's very questionable. For the con side, you should maximize this testimony. The NSA solved 50 cases in 2013. There must be many, many, many more since then, but we don't know because it's secret, but we should trust the leader of the NSA, the leader of the FBI, our intelligence leaders, whose single job, whose sole mission in life is to keep us safe. We should trust that they know what they're doing. All right. Um, next, let's go into pro arguments and then con arguments. I think I can't be with you on video. Unfortunately, during this, you're going to have to look at the Prezi instead of my beautiful face. So on to pro. Pro wants to say you should end the spying on U.S. citizens. You should characterize the government perhaps as authoritarian, meaning the government is trying to take more control, it's trying to seize control, it's trying to uh, control everything you do in life, and especially to set up um, the the basis for be, being able to control like everyone in every way possible. Um, now there's a big hole, obviously, in terms of security, in terms of our, our progress towards authoritarianism, once again, the NSA isn't the only agency who does this. There's many agencies who do this, right? In addition, most of the surveillance that's done to us is um, from private companies. So Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, obviously, um, but also, you know, just, just Gmail or uh, standard web browsers. There's a lot of private companies that allow us to be uh, surveilled constantly. So given the huge... Um, private company issue plus the huge government issue, our whole is massive, right? So why should we even try to stop it? Because we need to be taking small steps like ending NSA surveillance to get us out of the hole. You can think of if you went to the doctor, right? And he found a uh, cancer, right? He, you have stomach cancer, there's five uh, tumors on your stomach. And he says, today we have to do this one operation to remove one of these tumors. You're not going to say, no, no, we shouldn't remove this because there's still more cancer there left. Like, no, of of course, we got to get all the cancer, but we got to take these steps first, right? And NSA surveillance, just because there's other bad things happening doesn't mean we need to make it uh, worse, right? 
Uh, and this is especially true in the case of the NSA because it doesn't even work. Their program is ineffectual, right? They're not doing anything to help us. They're only taking away our rights. That's all they're doing. Also important is that under the status quo, the surveillance is worsening. So let's say not a lot of bad things have happened to Americans so far because of surveillance. We're essentially, um, I mean, not just in the case of the NSA, but in a lot of cases, we're able to essentially stop crime through surveillance, right? That sounds good. Doesn't seem like too many abuses of U.S. citizen rights so far because of surveillance, although there is some. But the status quo is worsening, so we need to stop this now. First, COVID-19 track and trace software uh, will make this worse, right? It'll make the government more easy to track who you're hanging out with and for how long and in what places. Facial recognition makes this worse. So uh, mass facial recognition, meaning that a camera pointed at your face anywhere in public, which they are in most cities, everywhere in public, is going to know who you are and where you are, right? Uh, facial recognition, this also deals with bioinformation. So uh, your heart rate, your temperature, there's a lot of things they can gather about you other than just what your face looks like. Um, also, Internet of Things, uh, so connected devices, smartwatches, blah, blah, blah. Um, this is going to continue into the future more and more and more. So the status quo, under the status quo, we're losing our freedoms all the time. We need to stop this now. Some of the major arguments, although by no means all of them, are privacy. So we have a right to privacy under the Constitution. Um, oh, that's next, right? Yeah, we have a right to privacy. Uh, there are psychological effects to not having your privacy. Uh, for example, you get more stressed out. Uh, there's actually some good effects, like you tend to act better, like a little bit more pro-social behavior, but also some bad things. Um, maybe you're going to self-censor, and so this can harm innovation, for example. A lot of bad things about losing privacy. You can make a whole case about this. It also changes search patterns. So this is from Matthews and Tucker 17. They say that people stop uh, searches for health-related information because you have something wrong with your health, but it's embarrassing. If you know that it, you're being spied on, you don't want to do Google searches about it. And that can hurt you, right? What if it's a heart problem or uh, cancer, right? I mean, more obvious things like STDs would be things that people would be really embarrassed about. You don't want to search for them. But if you don't search for them, you're not getting access to vital health information. Next, there's a slippery slope with selective law enforcement. So Marlin Spike 13 says that everyone is committing some kind of crime because there's so many thousands of pages of law that we're certainly not stopping or we're, we're certainly breaking some kind of law somewhere at some time. So if the government is allowed to know everything that you're doing, if they're allowed to spy on everything you're doing, uh, it's a slippery slope before we get to selective law enforcement, which is prosecuting the people that you want to prosecute. Obviously, we can't throw everyone in jail, but if you have information about everyone and you have this one guy, this one girl that you want to take down, you can do that with selective law enforcement, right? Once again, if we have all the information on everyone, then everyone becomes a potential suspect based on... Um, uh, the, and, and convictions happen just based on whether the government actually wants to target you or not. So privacy is important. Privacy needs to be maintained. Uh, this is one of the first arguments. Next, uh, security. So you may think this is a con argument. It's also a pro argument. There's a reason that there's some liabilities to having the NSA uh, spy on everything you do. So number one, centralized databases are bad. Uh, if we have all of the information about all Americans and all, presumably the rest of the world, and centralized databases at the NSA, if the if someone were to break into the NSA systems, uh, hackers were to break in, they would have access to all of this data, right? Do we really want foreign agents, for example, to have access to all of the data of everyone in the US? Probably not. Second, it could compromise officials. This is Greenwald 13 says that because we can, and this is uh, uh, in, a, in a recent uh, Edward Snowden interview, he made this point that during his job, he could spy on anyone, right? On, on judges, on attorneys, on accountants, on senators, even on the president, he says. And so any of these people could be compromised by, by blackmail, right? You find out that someone's um, having an affair. You find out that someone's doing drugs. You find out that someone has some corruption. Uh, any of these people could be compromised, right? You have this blackmail and then you tell the politician or, who, or the judge or whoever you say, you have to do what I tell you to do. Otherwise, I'm going to release this information. You know, I'm going to ruin your family. I'm going to ruin your career. So this is an issue. Uh, last, the tools that the NSA develops are extremely powerful. We just talked about some of them. If you opened up that uh, link I gave you before, you'll see like the, if there is something that is possible to do with a computer, 
either they can do it or they're working on doing it. And these are software tools. Uh, it's pretty cool if you develop this technology, right? But NSA is on the cutting edge of this technology. So it's not like there are uh, criminal organizations that are developing a lot of this stuff. But if the NSA develops it, criminal organizations can get access to it. So in the same way that the centralized database is bad, uh, giving uh, bad actors access to all of the information, giving bad actors access to these very powerful tools is also an issue. All right. NSA surveillance is illegal. Uh, U.S. First Maulin at the bottom ruled that phone tapping was illegal. This is one case. Uh, but just constitutionally, there are issues with it. So the Fourth Amendment protects uh, Americans against unreasonable searches and seizures. Unreasonable searches and seizures means uh, there needs to be a reason for the government to search you. There needs to be a reason for them to take something from you. They can't just take something from you or search your person or search your property for no reason, right? That's why, for example, if you're pulled over in your car, uh, the police are not allowed to search you. It's unreasonable, right? Unless they suspect something, which is why they will always say that they suspect something, right? Um, if they want to search you. Uh, it's the reason why if a police, a police officer comes to your door, they can't come in and search your property because of your Fourth Amendment, Amendment rights. Um, unless, of course, they suspect something that would be reasonable, but unreasonable ones are um, unconstitutional. So the government spying on everything you do, that's not reasonable. What do they have to suspect? There, there's no way that they can suspect every, suspect every person in the U.S. of doing something bad. That's crazy, right? Uh, that's why you need to get a warrant, right? I suspect this person of doing this thing for this reason. You get a warrant and then you go search them. Uh, Fifth Amendment, another amendment of the Constitution, uh, which is the right to due process. So uh, you can't be just arrested, thrown in jail, tried, uh, convicted, spied on for no reason. There, there, there's a, a legal process that we go through uh, for criminals. So this is the, the Fifth Amendment, uh, another way that the NSA spying program breaks the law. Um, if you hear the beautiful music behind me, I live in Taiwan. This is what the trash trucks sound like. No, I'm not kidding. On to... Oh, I think probably the best thing for the pro side will be a 2019 Edward Snowden essay. Here's the link to it. Write it down or op open it. By the way, this is case sensitive, so DTNSA, all uppercase. Um, I believe this essay is an intro to a book he wrote, but just absolutely wonderful. I think if you want to be real nice and lazy about about making your case. Uh, this is like a semi-serious meme case. You can just read the essay. Hon to Khan. So, we are taking off our pro hat, putting on our Khan hat. We no longer think of the government as uh, authoritarian. We think of the government as protective and paternal. The government is helping us. The government is doing what it can to keep us ignorant fools safe, right? Once again, uh, the child really, really wants to play with the fire. As the parent, you can't let them do what they want. You know that you're going to get hurt. You, as the parent, are m smarter. You know more than your kid. And so that's your job to keep uh, the kid safe, even if they cry about it, even if they protest, right? Even if uh, it's not what they want, it doesn't matter. Uh, you would be not. You would not be doing your job if you're not keeping that kid safe. Uh, the con side, because of all of the secrecy around, surrounding the NSA, should shift the burden of proof to only the possibility of preventing crime or terrorism. Because if the con team must prove that the NSA does actually prevent crime and terrorism, there's no way for the con team to win. Right? The, the NSA doesn't tell us anything. Right? The last time we heard anything substantial was in 2013, and even there, 90% of the cases they referenced were classified. So how can the con win with no information? If they have to prove that the NSA is working, that's unreasonable. You should say, no, we have to prove that it's possible to prevent uh, crime. And that is comparatively much easier for the crime for the uh, con team. Uh, in terms of legality, this will be in the Kahoot quizzes, if uh, that's something you or your team or your class is doing. U.S. versus has Bajrami, has, ba, has, has Bajrami, 
U.S. versus H, um, which ruled that these are uh, that 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 the surveillance programs of the U.S. of the NSA are constitutional. All right, the con team can also say if depending on your case, depending on your uh, contentions, you can say that lives outweigh everything else. Once again, it's really cute that you want. Uh, you know, privacy and you want all of your rights, even in this dangerous age of 2020. Uh, it's, it's adorable that you don't want the U S to be on the cutting edge of, um, the, of, of security. It's, um, unfortunate, but also so privileged that you think that U S hegemony doesn't matter, but look, it does out lives outweigh everything. If you're dead, you don't have any rights. Um, next, there's no actual solvency for privacy. So the pro, the pro side says, look, we need to, we need more privacy. We need our rights. You can't actually change the status quo because of all these things we've already talked about. Um, private companies, other agencies in the government, five eyes and enemy countries, of course, Iran, North Korea, Russia, China, blah, 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 all spy on us all the time. So like, okay, let's say you abolish the NSA. Let's say that you erase any trace of the NSA ever having existed. In the status quo, nothing changes. You're still being spied on by all these other organizations. All right, the con team's uh, major kicker is terrorism. That's what the NSA is especially, uh, essentially supposed to be doing. Uh, so we have the Levy 13 and other evidence talking about the, the 2013 testimony, 50 tax stop, 10 of them domestic. Um, two of them were the New York Stock Exchange and the New York subway system that were going to be bombed. So you can uh, work these in as, as an examples and extrapolate from there. Um, I do so in the in the evidence. Uh, other possible attacks. We have to once again say that the NSA can stop these attacks, not that they do. Chemical, biological attacks, nuclear attacks, cyber terrorism, all of these things can make excellent contentions or cases. Go run with them. Um, also prepared for Terry's. Look up that YouTube video, my favorite comedians. Other crime that the NSA can uh, stop. So the NSA shares information with the FBI. This is about like federal crimes. The FBI just handles, they're like the the big police, right? The whatever, stopping federal crime. The DAA to stop with drugs and the DHS to help potentially with human trafficking. Um, the Department of Health, uh, Health of Homeland Security, I'm sorry. Department of Homeland Security. There's a bunch of other departments that the um, NSA likely shares information with, but I just have these three cards cut for uh, where the NSA shares information with. So all of these groups stop crime. NSA helps to do it. Do we know how? Well, the thing is, once again, we don't. It's all a secret. One of the reasons that the NSA doesn't say, uh, doesn't publicize this information is because if they do, then they'll have to, the agents will have to go to court uh, and give testimony about like, where did they get this information and how did they find it, blah, blah, blah. And so the NSA wants to keep their agents out of the judicial system, um, out of having to deal with lawsuits and things like that. So they give this information secretly to these other organizations. They also try to mask the information, like they try to pretend, and this is all uh, warranted out. This is what we all, we have evidence about all of this. We, uh, that, um, that, yeah, that the information will be masked, that they'll direct these other organizations to pretend that they found out about the information in a different way, right? So they say the, t they tell the FBI about like a, um, uh, drug trafficking ring and the FBI can just go do some phone taps on these potential suspects or try to find references on social media to things. And they'll say, Hey, we stumbled across this information in a different way. Uh, we know that the NSA is sharing information with these groups. Once again, we don't know uh, what exactly it's doing. But if COD successfully shifts the burden to only proving that things could be stopped, that should not be a problem. Next, foreign threats. So this is like the main deal about like what the NSA is supposed to be doing. If you take a strict interpretation of the uh, resolution and say that no U.S. citizens should be sp spied on, the issue with that is that in the course of surveilling other countries, there will be some U.S. citizens in those other countries. And the citizens will have connections with foreign agents, right? So um, they'll obviously be working with people in, inside the U.S. Maybe they'll just be friends with people inside the U.S. And so if you want to stop all surveillance of U.S. citizens, then you're going to have to stop all surveillance. 
because it happens accidentally sometimes. And once again, this been this has been ruled legal, but uh, it happens, right? So it, this this is all you have to stop the NSA's entire surveillance mission if you're stopping um, surveillance on U.S. citizens. What are the things that uh, we're able to stop? So nuclear threats, obviously North Korea. We've um, ruined some of their missile attacks. Uh, I think that's in large part because of the NSA. They've like done cyber attacks against North Korea for their missiles. Uh, Iran, famously, the Stuxnet attack, which um, hit their nuclear program. And in the status quo, uh, Iran's nuclear program is advancing. So that's an issue. Um, also, cyber threats from China, Russia. You could talk about like election interference, but like also just USA. I mean, yeah, USA, Russia, and China all have huge digital uh, attacks, threats on each other. Like that is a whole ecosystem of ongoing constant attacks and defense. Um, if you weaken the NSA at all, as I've just described, but just in general, um, you'll hurt national security. So this Gerstle 19 and Orlando 19 evidence is really, really, really excellent stuff in terms of, um, you prevent the NSA from doing something, you're going to hurt national security. All right, guys, we're done. That did not, that was not, a. That was not 30 minutes. Um, so this you cannot see, which is super nice. Uh, it's tiny.cc slash DTNSA3. This is a lawyer from the NSA uh, writing an essay. It's one of these guys. One of these guys. I don't remember which one. Um, but yeah, writing a, an essay about why we need to keep supporting the NSA. Once again, write this down. Tiny.cc slash capital DTNSA3. Sorry, you can't see that. All right, um, that's it. We're finished. If you are doing this in class, if you're a teacher, don't let your students see this next part. These are the links to the cahoots. Uh, one of the cahoots is on the background information. Another one is on pro arguments. Another, another one is on con arguments. So teachers, turn off the projector. Here's the links. Um, even if you're just watching this by yourself, I recommend like take out your phone and take these quizzes. Uh, this is a very, very good way to like help solidify a lot of this topic information, which will be very useful during your, uh, debate rounds. All right. Thank you guys. I've got a little bit other things for you. So I told you that there are some ways you can make, um, some money while you're practicing debate, but, um, I actually have two ways. So first I'm throwing a rebuttal contest. Uh, record a video of you giving a rebuttal to the debate track cases. Uh, there will be links in the description at the end of this video or and at the end of this video. So upload your rebuttal speech to YouTube based on either or both of these cases and send it to me on uh, Instagram would be the best the debate track Instagram um, or email it to me if you don't have Instagram. Um, it does need to be public so that the community can be can benefit from it and can use it to practice summary speeches. Um, the best rebuttal from pro and from con will win $121. PayPal only. You have to have a PayPal account. Uh, the deadline is January 7th. 121 bucks if you have the best. Last time I threw a, a debate contest, by the way, one person entered. So your chances are pretty good. If there's one person and they give both of the rebuttal speeches, then you win $242. Good way to practice debate and maybe make some money. Uh, second, second way for money, uh, make a video of you giving Debate Track a shout out during your speech. Just give me like a little video clip, like thanks Debate Track for this case, thanks Debate Track for uh, this evidence or whatever. Be creative. Uh, do it at a tournament, and I'll donate five dollars to Give Well, which is the world's best charity. Uh, please include uh, the name of the tournament and only one entry per person. For this topic, I'll donate up to $1,000. I'll add an extra $20 if the shout out is during finals. Um, if I suspect you're on mute, doesn't count. I'm not gonna give the money. Tune in next time for the next topic to see if I regret this. I don't think donating to give well is something I'll ever regret, to be fair. All right, thanks for listening. Good luck. See you next time.